Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you Social Locker, a plugin that allows you to lock content behind a share wall, as you can see below. I'm going to show you how to set it up, and I'm going to show you the options in the plugin, and I'll be covering only its free version in this video. Social Locker is a premium and freemium plugin, and it comes with out of the box some great functionality. So you start off, and you get the All Lockers window. So the all lockers menu allows you to easily modify the appearance of your social locker box. By default, you only get access to two buttons, the Facebook like button and the standard Twitter, uh, Twitter tweet button. And when you set it up, you can modify the theme. You get nice two options, starter and uh, secrets. If you're asking for what the difference is, it's uh, basically that button. Personally, I went ahead and I went with starter. I left the text the default. I chose to use the native buttons because I didn't want to have to add some custom CSS. A little bit lazy, I know. And I did not bother filling out any of the details, but I do recommend a couple of things. Personally, I'm not a fan of share counters, but you could choose to hide or show them if you like. I will be hiding them because I do not like them. For the Facebook button, I do recommend you add your Facebook URL for the user to like, otherwise this is gonna be very useless. And then there's the Twitter button. For the Twitter button, I do recommend you have the at attribute to tweet at your Twitter profile. This in turn will draw some more attention to your Twitter profile and get you some more followers, hopefully. And then on the right hand side, you get access to a couple of interesting options. It will list the short code here for manual locking of content. You could do a batch locking, which I don't really recommend doing, but what it allows you to do is you can lock content in a bulk fashion under a couple of conditions. Number one, you could just do it by a number of paragraphs. So you can choose, say, after paragraph three of every post, then it is locked until they share it. Personally, I feel like that's very obnoxious. You should only be locking content behind share walls that somebody actually wants to get useful info out of. Um, primarily, let's say in my case, I'm a WordPress dev. I have blog posts and I copied one on here as you saw and I had a code snippet. Well, I hid the code snippet behind the share wall. That way the user is forced to like and share my content if they want to see the post and that's a fair thing to do in this scenario. You lock up behind there and you get a free like and share out of it. This is quite useful if you're trying to attract users in your field. Uh, one thing that I'm going to say is, while you can get a lot of followers and likes out of this, there's a good chance they're just going to unlike you right afterwards. Um, something to keep in mind, though. Uh, the more tag, if you use the more tag, which I'm just going to go out and allege and say 90% of you don't even know what the more tag is, you have the option to um, hide all the content after it with it. I've never met a site that actually uses this. Um, maybe once I ran into a site, but uh, the more tag is meant to help segment content on two separate pages, but I can't think of the last time I saw a site that used it. And then the CSS selector. This will allow you to choose a content based on selectors to be hidden. This can be useful if you're say the WordPress dev and you share code snippets and every one of your code snippets is wrapped with a specific class called uh, code. So you could target that CSS selector and hide every instance of that very easily. This makes it much easier on you to manage and it doesn't drive you crazy. So these are great options. Um, I personally just won't use them for the sake of this demonstration, but if you already have it in mind that the content that you do wish to lock and at what point, go ahead and do it now. Um, there is a terms and policies page for GDPR compliance. Essentially, you could choose to get a consent box for GDPR, which when you enable it, either at the top or bottom, it basically leaves a little checkbox that says, I agree with the terms and use of privacy. And you could put it at the top. Personally, I prefer to look at the bottom. And one more thing is you could choose to have a footer reference, which is just a little bit of text that says basically the exact same thing. If you're going for GDPR compliance, just use the checkbox just like this. If you're just trying to be nice and you have no one from Europe visiting your website or you just don't care, um, go ahead and just hit the on button for the footer reference to get that nice clean look. 
Finally, we're going to go into the global settings here. I'm just gonna hit the save button because I don't wanna lose it. The, set, the global settings is where you can modify quite a few of the interesting bits of this plugin. So, uh, number one, you can choose the language of your buttons from a large variety, and there are a ton of languages in here, which I will not be covering because it would take too long. Then you can choose to enable lazy loading. When it's on, the social buttons, if it loads, if it's on, it'll create the social buttons only at the moment when the locker gets visible. Uh, this is primarily useful if you're using the native buttons because the native JS otherwise will download a bunch of assets that are quite slow and it will impact your overall load time. But if you have your content box at the bottom of your post, there's no reason to make the user download that content at least immediately. So this is a good option. I recommend enabling it. You could choose to include a Facebook app ID if you want to use the Facebook share or Facebook sign in buttons. For most of you, you don't need to bother. Um, as for the Facebook API version, just run whichever one you're using for your other apps or widgets. And then you can also include the Twitter app key and the Twitter app key secret if you're trying to use the Twitter bit of functionality. And then there's the Google client ID for the Google sign in button. You can use any of the three options. Personally, I'm not a fan of the sign in button. I think having somebody sign in for content is pretty silly unless you're charging for it, in which case you'll have a membership site. You're primarily here to get shares, and this is what the plugin excels at. For the lock options, you can do a couple of interesting bits. Number one, uh, there is a debug option here to help figure out why your locker may not be working. Uh, there is a passcode. When the, when the passcode contains your website URL, the content gets automatically unlocked. This is interesting. Um, basically, you can include a random string at the end of a URL, and if you're trying to share to your social channels, maybe use Bitly, for instance, and you share it to your Pinterest page. And you don't want your Pinterest followers to get asked to share content to Twitter. So you include the passcode in a URL, and you then share that via a Bitly link to your Pinterest page. This will then bypass the content locker for them, which can improve the overall user experience. Um, that is if you're using it. If you're not, then it does absolutely nothing. And then what's also awesome is you get a permanent unlock for passcode. So your lockers will always be revealed if the user opened the page with the passcode. So let's say somebody goes from your Pinterest page in the click it, and then they come back a couple hours later and they just go to their phone and they find it, find your website and go to the URL. And because they went from the Pinterest app first, they don't have to have that passcode again. It saves a cookie on their phone and they don't have to worry about it. It's a good bit of functionality. It's a good way of rewarding your existing followers if you make good use of it. In-app browsers, you could choose by um, show locker with a warning. So if you're like in the Facebook app browser or Instagram, these uh, apps have a basically a built-in version of Google Chrome slapped into them. Um, this will allow you to hide a warning or you could just, just hide the locker. I would recommend hiding the locker uh, for ad block, I would just say if somebody's using ad block, hide the locker and show the content because if they're using ad blocker, they're not going to be bothered to go ahead and share the content. Uh, you can choose to lock content if visible in the RSS feeds. Most people aren't going to do that. And then you can just do actual URLs by default. If you do not set explicit URLs to like share, then the plugin by default will use an URL of the page where the locker is located. You can choose to turn on this option to extract URLs to like share from an address bar the, from the user browsing history, blah, 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 blah. Does not really matter. Uh, then you get session duration. The session duration by default is 900 seconds. I turned it to zero for the sake of demonstration. Uh, when you set it to this time, basically somebody likes your post or tweets it. This is how long they have until they are no longer able to see that content. Typically, somebody isn't viewing the content for an extended period of time. However, I think once somebody shares it, they should continue to be able to see it as long as they physically can. Then you can choose session freezing, which is if on the length of the user session is fixed. By default, sessions are prolonged automatically every time when a user visits your website for a specified value of the session, session duration. Fancy stuff. Uh, really, I would just... Once the, the session duration, you can make it whatever you wish. 
Um, just don't be annoying with it. Users don't want to be uh, don't want to be asked to share something multiple times if they've already shared it once. It's quite obnoxious to them. And the more you do it, the more likely they are to go somewhere else. There's a reason that a lot of content isn't locked behind share walls, and it's because it's honestly just annoying to the users. If the user doesn't see the content, then they're not likely to share it in the first place. So it's kind of counterintuitive. If the user finds the content useful, then they're more likely to share it, but you're asking for them to share it before they see it. So just don't overload them by forcing them to constantly reshare content. And then you could just use, if I have a dynamic theme, if the page loads content basically via Ajax, this helps to get the lockers working. Most of you shouldn't have anything to worry about. If you're using a theme where you scroll down on a post and it automatically loads in the next one through infinite scrolling, you might need to check this option. Most of you don't have to worry though. And you can skip past all of this. And then one thing that's interesting is some special browser extensions allow people to view locked content without actually sharing. This is just to help prevent them from cheating and to bypassing it. I wouldn't do that. Don't try to force the behavior on the user. It's just not a good thing to do. Uh, you could just turn on stats. Personally, I don't think they're worth anything. Um, the stats will honestly be an increase in your followers. That's what really matters. You don't need to know what percentage of your users are actually bothering to hit the share button and of those and which one they used. It, it's kind of a lot of information that you're going to look at once in a blue moon and it just clutters your database. Most of you probably aren't gonna follow it. One thing you can do though is you can set a, the plugin will generate a Google Analytics event, which then you can funnel into Google Analytics. This is how I would do it. If you're gonna be collecting data, send it to Google Analytics. Don't bother storing it on your server because it is a waste of space. In fact, clearing that data, who cares about that statistical data? All of it. It is, it's even got the explosion. My data is empty and I am perfectly fine with that. You can get a uh, notifications, um, kind of silly. I don't bother with these too much. There is a Zapier integration for leads, which is a bit of interesting stuff. And you can modify the permission settings of the plugin. The front end text, this allows you to translate it very easily. And then the terms and policies allows you to change the terms and conditions and privacy policy that is generated for your website. Finally, we can now jump into how to use this thing. And that is a very, very fun experience. And I'm using that term a little sarcastically. So what I'm gonna do to save myself some time is I'm gonna open up the page of this post and I am then going to come right here, just so that way I have this nice short code that I'm going to wanna use. There are two ways you can use this effectively. You can, number one, use the old short code method, or number two, you can put it in a block. Each has its advantage and disadvantage. Uh, if you disable it and the block disappears, you're probably gonna run into some issues. But if you use the short code method, it'll just lock the content. So I took all this code right here and I pasted it inside of the uh, social share button uh, block. Basically, it's just a container block or like a column block and you can copy and paste other blocks into it. Or if you're writing your content on the spot, you can just go ahead and wrap it in the locker. So for instance, you'll come down to the end of this post right here and I'm going to insert a block and I'm gonna type in the word social and then it's not going to appear because as always the, the, the bit of share functionality, uh, search functionality is pretty worthless. Um, the social locker and now I'm just gonna say hello world and I expect this content to not be visible on the page. And after the ending paragraph, it'll have another social locker box. And it does, and it looks fine. It, it looks fine. Um, very simple. And then you would go ahead and like or tweet to unlock it. I am not going to be doing that because as soon as I do that, then I have to, then my boxes disappear and I'm just not going to bother. Now, the other way to integrate it instead of using that block, and if you want to see how I can easily wrap content around it, if you copy a block like this, we're going to delete the block in here, and we're just going to paste it in there. All the content goes in there. It works with script blocks and HTML blocks and basically anything else. Your other option is to though go ahead and instead use a short code block. So I'm going to be short code blocking basically everything in this first section up until where it says, so what needs to be optimized? 
To do this, you can go ahead and use a short code block, which when you search for it, for me, at least doesn't come up, which I find to be very frustrating. Layout elements, uh, there it is, widgets, short code. Now, you need to copy the first bit of the short code because this is the opening tag. Essentially what we're saying is anything that starts here and ends here, we are locking. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna insert another short code block. There it is, it's nice there in my spot. And we're going to just do it right here. Awesome. So we come over here, we update the post, it says it's fixed, and now I expect virtually everything up here to be behind that social locker now. And it is, and it works great. And that's really all this plugin is. There is a premium version, and the premium version comes with a lot of extra stuff. As they mentioned, you get access to additional visibility options and a ton of premium options. One thing that's funny is it still mentions Google+. Plus. Google Plus does not exist, and it has not for a while. They should really update that. And then you get the YouTube subscribe, a LinkedIn share, and then Twitter follows and Facebook shares as well. Personally, I wish that the paid version came with some additional options. Um, maybe add some social networks that are working for other parts of the world other than Facebook and Twitter. That's just my two cents. Now, one thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disable the plugin just to show you what happens when you turn this plugin off. And as you can see, I had this content right here in the social locker block. So we're going to see what happens to it. How to remove just the inline CSS block. And we're going to scroll on down. And it mentions here that the site doesn't include this block. You can leave the text, the you can leave this block intact and convert it into a custom HTML block or remove it entirely and if we're curious of what this looks like we're going to come back over here and we're going to reload it so basically all that got left at least in the first bit was the code from the short code which we expect and everything else was visible um, just keep this in mind if you were using the short code implementation you're going to have to clean that up and frankly the only way to do that effectively will be to go ahead and use a search and replace um, otherwise, that's really it. Great plugin if you're somebody in the market for it. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.